Hello and welcome to another episode of the CG Garage. This is episode number 431, featuring Lyndon Vinard, a fabulous person who I met uh, a long, long time ago, uh, back when I was working at a company or started working at a company called Speed Shape, which is a company that he helped get start uh, based out of Detroit, Michigan, believe it or not. And he is, uh, that's where he's from. That is basically his background. He got involved in CG uh, actually through the automotive industry in, in a lot of ways uh, and did a lot of interesting work there. Automotive CG is very, very specialized and very, very complicated and very, very subjective. Um, and there's a lot of trick to it uh, that is pretty interesting. I actually think that there's a lot of similarity between automotive CG and digital humans because uh, it is something that just needs to look absolutely perfect or you clearly can tell that it doesn't look real. Um, and so I think there's something very special about that. Anyway, one of the first people I learned that uh, that art firm was was from Linden. So it was really kind of cool to have him back and to talk about the amazing stuff that he's doing now. He has uh, you know, kind of done a lot of things since Speedship, and we get into that quite a bit. Uh, but uh, you know, be, you know, like I said, he came from Detroit. He learned about the complexity of taking CAD data and turning that into usable data that we can use uh, for automotive industry. Uh, he's done ArcViz work as well, and he continues to do uh, forms of that through through trade shows and things of that na uh, that nature. He took a long vision quest after sort of speed shape closed and figure out what to to do with his life and travel the earth, which is kind of awesome. Uh, he's, uh, you know, pretty interesting in a lot of ways, but what he's really got into as of late, and we get that in the end of the podcast, he's really gotten into AI art. He's gotten really into mid journey quite a bit. Uh, I know this is a controversial subject, but boy, it is really cool to hear what Lyndon is trying to do in this space because it is kind of all out there and kind of crazy. Um, and I think he said, I think he said something like he's created almost half a million uh, images since he started using Midjourney, which is insane. Um, uh, he's actually been banned several times because of the crazy things that he tries to create on Midjourney. Uh, obviously, his his uh, his accounts been restored, but boy, what a guy! What an interesting guy, and really really cool to talk to Linden, and uh, very interesting to hear that perspective on AI. Um, I I do you know like I am actually really 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 trying to have a very balanced conversation on the on what that is. Lyndon is clearly very positive about AI, and he and I mentioned the fact that uh, some people have not necessarily been very positive towards him because of his positivity towards AI. Uh, next week, I'm going to try to post a podcast from someone who's got some. Uh, you know, concerns about AI, another uh, very, very reputable artist. Uh, and we'll talk to him and hear those concerns. So I'm really trying to put it out there and be very balanced. And I'm also going to have another podcast coming out very soon with uh, uh, an entertainment lawyer and to hear his point of view on how AI is going to affect the entertainment industry. So I'm really trying to get everyone's point of view involved in this. Uh, but clearly, Lyndon's uh, uh, perspective is the more the merrier and the better. And so uh, considering how happy he is, I certainly do not feel that I should take that away from him and definitely all the amazing things he's done. Okay, moving on from this conversation, a couple of announcements I want to do. Uh, there's a big one, uh, V-Ray uh, for Houdini uh, 6 uh, is out, update 1, sorry, V-Ray for Houdini 6 update 1 is out with lots of great new improvements. Obviously, you've seen these in other packages of V-Ray, uh, but this is now updated to V-Ray for Houdini and I'm very excited about that. Uh, there's a bump to glossiness uh, effect. It is really sort of helps balance uh, ma a bump maps, glossiness maps to get the correct effect. This is especially true for things like skin and hair, uh, skin specifically. Uh, so definitely go check that out, the bump to glossiness effect. Uh, we've added a lot of new controls to lights, including new decay controls. Uh, we've enhanced our procedural cloud system, which is really cool. We've done a lot on USD to really help process that in terms of obviously how you're working with Solaris. Uh, and speaking of Solaris, we've actually uh, reduced our time to first pixel uh, when using Solaris, which is also a big thing. Uh, we've also added uh, some new, the new NVIDIA denoiser and upscaler, uh, which are AI-based uh, denoiser and upscalers, which is really cool. So that's been added. Uh, we've done a lot of big enhancements to uh, V-Ray GPU in terms of things like memory optimization and all other kinds of things as well. So lots and lots of new stuff to do there. So definitely go check it out. Just go to chaos.com and check out uh, the new updates for V-Ray for Houdini. Very excited about that. Okay, 
Got a couple of events going on right now. Uh, we are just this week, uh, we're going to have June 19th through 20th. We're going to be at Next Build and Next Dev in London. So go check that out. Uh, and we are also going to be at the end user event in Utrecht, Netherlands. Uh, Vlado himself will be there. I'm almost positive he will be there. <laughs> and that is going to be June 21st through 22nd. So uh, we were excited to see you there. That's at the end user event on June 21st and 22nd. Uh, all of this can be found out at chaos.com slash events. Again, that is chaos.com slash events. Now, if you want to know more about the podcast, of course, you can always go to our webpage, which is chaos.com slash CG Garage. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on Facebook, that's also always a possibility. Uh, Facebook.com slash CG Garage podcast is our Facebook page. If you'd like to watch these podcasts, which I always recommend, uh, youtube.com slash chaosgrouptv. Again, youtube.com slash chaosgrouptv. Don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube. We'd always like to have that. And if you have ideas of podcasts or you'd like to suggest guests or you'd like to make a comment about something, uh, always welcome that. We've gotten some great suggestions recently and lots of good feedback. Labs at chaos.com. Again, that is labs at chaos.com. But for now, please enjoy episode number 431 with Lyndon Vinard. Welcome to another CG Garage where the chaos group talks. You'll know it's over when the last bucket drops. We're gonna fire off rays in high dynamic range. We know that ambient occlusion is passe. Global illumination won't lead you astray And while image-based lighting is really swell You need to make sure everything has for now And it's good to see you. Well, then, yeah. It, we did get older. You. you got older. I've lost all my hair. <laughs> yeah. I gained, I gained so much more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's awesome to see you. How you been, man? In the last 10 years? The same, Leah. Yeah, a lot less stressed. Uh, um, happy. You got married. You got a kid. Nice. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think you actually the, it's been. <laughs> we were when we worked together it was right before my daughter was born. So it's yep. sixteen years, <laughs> almost seventeen years. <laughs> she's getting. She is. Um, uh, she's going to be a senior in high school now <laughs> driving yep <laughs> uh, it's so scary teenage girls drivers are about the scariest thing oh she's a good driver i have no fears <laughs> about that no. um mm -hmm. that's 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 no problem but uh but yeah that's funny man it's been a long time all right so mm -hmm. we'll we'll establish that you and i work together at speed shape but I want to yeah. know <laughs> before that, how did you even get into computer graphics or do any of that kind of stuff? All right, are we talking? Um, so originally, yeah, I think it was the same as everyone else, uh, like Jurassic Park, uh, The Abyss, just that like mind blowing uh, movie visual effects like things. Oh, actually, fucking Lawnmower Man. Oops, sorry. That's no, okay, you can swear. Uh, <laughs> Lawnmower Man. Do you remember that? Yeah. That, like, I was just, like, I think I had it printed and was just looking at how, amazed, how amazing everything was, the like, things rotating and the, 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 oh, and then also uh, Young Frank, Young, not Frankenstein, yeah, Young uh, Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes, yeah, that piece of glass. I remember watching that frame by frame. Yeah. It's probably the same as everybody. That was the first uh, CG character ever in a movie. And, like, just the, the even the audio of, like, the glass kind of crinkling as the thing popped off and yeah that was mind blowing so yeah it's probably the same as everybody else yeah and uh i knew i wasn't gonna make it as a fine artist like i went to school for fine arts and uh i got yeah i was gonna do the oil painting and, and figure drawing i did do all that and i was good at it but uh it was in detroit and i would see people better talented more talented than i was working at the surrounding restaurants years later with the school debt <laughs> I'm like, I need to, I need to do something. So I switched over to transportation and transportation had the computers and that, that's when I, I kind of learned everything. And Detroit was, you know, that, that was obviously Detroit's big in the transportation and automotive design, oh, yeah. right? So it was automotive mm -hmm. design kind of stuff that you were doing. 
Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, that's where all them. Yeah. So Baxter, uh, I went to, um, it was center for creative studies. Now it's college for creative studies back around like 95. Right. And, uh, uh, yeah, all the money went to transportation. So they had the, the big SGI, the big green SGI computers and, and alias. That's, yeah. That's why I started on. Ah, alias. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying to, I was trying to model birds and creatures with like, Six degree span nerves, <laughs> like, like super high tolerance. Trying to snap like corners of, yeah. Trying to make birds. You're trying to make birds on the alias. <laughs> ah. mm-hmm. uh-huh. Yeah, trying to get like the corner crease as they rotated. The beaks were easy in the head. Farm I remember trying to make a heron. Right. And uh, but yeah, there was one chunk. There was like four quads or something. I just couldn't get. Yeah. Inside, so that was a pain in the ass. Tr- like, so everything was a pain in the ass. Yeah, I mean, trying to do creature modeling with nerves is like trying to do it with quilts. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever meet uh, Peter Waji when he made those patch tools where you could finally do like it would do in Max? You could do uh, um, yeah, it would just create patches. You'd do loose spline grid, okay, and then you'd put whatever Waji's patch tools, and then it would just do it. Like you could just get close enough. Wow, so that was the that was the best modeling tool in Max because there's no poly tools. There's no. That's right. That's right. I do remember that now. That was a long yeah, time so ago. You're, yeah, you were building a grid of splines, and then you had your bezier corners, and you can kind of like get close enough. Yeah. Yeah, that was all my first modeling stuff. Was Peter Waji. I wonder where he is. Oh, my goodness. That's a good, good. Uh... He was. He was a great. Yeah, you had probably. It was probably the last thing you made. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, so what is, uh, so what, did you go into automotive from there? Is that where you, did you yeah. go to, to speed shape from there or no? Uh, okay. So going uh, through that, I actually got a job at a, a large scale uh, indus- or engineering company called like MSX. And I interned there and I was able to get access to software. Like our school had nothing. There was zero infrastructure. There was zero storage, like there was zero internet, like it, it wasn't set up. And also there were, there was, it was a big transition. Like the teachers, they didn't know mm-hmm. you'd, you'd sit down with a teacher and the, their old school Viscon, they did clay, they did uh, um, marker renderings. Mm-hmm. And then they were kind of forced to, to sit at a box. Um, so uh, I got a summer internship and I just was able to, to get access to all these uh, uh, like engineering software so that's kind of uh, what led the jump to uh like uh, automotive kind of graphic stuff because like they i mean detroit everyone wants to see pictures of cars so right that's that that was my but that's uh, i was i was 19 then and speed shape didn't start till i was 24 25 okay okay yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you got into, you were one of the early people to adapt for, for car renderings and car, mm-hmm. car stuff. And at mm-hmm. that time, interesting. And it, so I followed, so, uh, surprisingly like Chrysler and GM had almost zero rendering, uh, like car rendering. So it's all hundred percent traditional. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a, a little company division X and they ha- somehow got these, this team of Canadians, this woman, husband and woman, and they remodeled like these Fords and Maya when Maya came out mm-hmm. and they were just beautiful. And like, they just like set such a high, high bar. And then I tried to recreate that in max. And since Ford was already doing it, I went to Chrysler. So I would, uh, I was at this uh, MSX company and we were kind of looking for work. So I went over to uh, Chrysler, just walked in and, and would just walk around the hallway until I found someone that was able to give me data collision data that was used for making uh, Mattel toys, like the little toy car. So I, I walked out of there with a floppy disk and uh, um, some data. And then I went back and Max, and I think it was final render and I made it shiny and then we got more. And then uh, since I was at uh, the company I was at was an engineering company, yeah. we were able to develop a pipeline for, for data to come in and out. And then finally we got enough interest that they did like a town hall meeting and they put up all of our renderings. Yeah, and that got funding, and that was uh, uh, like a, a big start of the big. The, then a lot of other companies got involved, and right, uh, it, Armstrong White actually won that bid, which was really, uh, really, 
kind of pissed because <laughs> I, I worked my ass off to, to get it, the ball rolling yep. and then someone else won it. And then, uh, so, uh, the company I was with just got tasked with mining the data for Armstrong White and me and like three other people, we got like left, like our, our whole division got dissolved. Oh, wow. Um, so then, uh, yeah, I got laid off from the group that started all this and then I went after GM and that was kind of like the impetus of speed shape was being pissed that I got, uh, like pushed out of my own thing with Chrysler. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, I mean, I know what speed shape is. Obviously I worked there for about a mm -hmm. year and, <laughs> but mm -hmm. let's get introduce people. What was the, what was the, the owners, what was speed shape all about? Let people know what, like how it started. And obviously it started because you wanted to do some data mining from, for, for, for GM and try to get, Mm -hmm. computer graphics card. i just wanted all the work they were the biggest i think it was one there was the biggest car company and there's just there's an untapped giant bohemian resource of stuff i just wanted to, to get in there and i was young yeah 24 25 i didn't know we didn't know what we were doing right um so we went after it um i went after it with a uh established car photography company uh, called stage three and i was uh working my ass off just in a, a in a, actually an old dark room, like a complete dark room, uh, and uh, making car pictures. And then uh, on the other side, Tom and Oyvind, they had OptiCore, and we met up and kind of just kind of like joined joined forces to make presentations for General Motors, right? And try to get that business. That was a crazy time. But it was grew up to a pretty big company. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was three people like just barely, barely, barely hold on. Like every every image was like a miracle that it got up. Right. And uh, I believe that the big big push was we got a uh, we got a hold of the C6 Corvette data. Okay. And uh, I was just throwing every like we had we had to turn it around in a day from like just handing a bunch of like every body panel separate. Right. And uh, I was piecing together the Corvette and I would save it. And when you opened it, all the normals were gone. Right. So you could work, work. You know about this problem? Yes, I do know that problem. So force no, you would, you would work, render great, but you couldn't open up, open the file. Yeah. Cause if you open it, it'll destroy people. all the normals. Yep. Yep. Force explicit force normals were gone. So you had to pray cause there was a shit ton of work to, to import everything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, got some beautiful images of Corvette. I think it went to uh, GM's, uh, one of their executives, and they saw the, the pictures and and the jaw hit the floor. And, and uh, then uh, that's what, that was the start of, that was the start of speech shape. Which yeah. Was, uh, a one image and, and a lot of work. But uh, yeah, it comes down, it usually comes down to just one teeny thing between like getting a contract, losing a contract. It's yeah. often like, a uh, friendship or a, or a one image that, that gets to the right person at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. It was, so a, it, was real, uh, it was a real, it was a real challenge. It was very interesting. Uh, and I learned a lot about car stuff at that point because the main thing, the one thing that speed shape was, uh, was very good at is one of the hardest problems, which is getting the data into. Oh system. yeah. Because the data came from CAD data. Usually yep. it was uh, NURBS data, et cetera. And so, Trying to convert that to something usable, and you were using Max, uh, or we mm -hmm. were using Max, uh, yep, was yep, definitely. hard. And uh, sometimes it was way too heavy because the CAD data had everything, right? It had the, mm -hmm. the, the light, the, the, the oh, writing every on every knob, that. like embedded into mm -hmm. the geometry, everything. And often it was, and uh, like the engineers, they just give you like CAD dumps. Right. So they, they got their everyday work. And then they get asked by like some dinky company to like organize trim a B surface. We had every secondary surface, all the, uh, um, yeah, like the molding, like composite stuff, all the threads. So right. They're not going to do that. So they would just throw massive dumps of data, nothing organized with like string name strings that are like three paragraphs long. And you're like, Oh, <laughs> gotta, gotta figure that out. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so we had to design a bunch of tools, and, and it was a lot of just brute force. Just you would bring something in and look at it, compare it to these build guides that they would give the car dealers, and then 
Uh, hopefully you you get the right <laughs> right trim, but uh, it, it took us some five years to develop like a, a good workflow. Like we we flew guys out to uh, um, you know I think it was Korea, which was really hard. Like these big biker guys from Detroit to sit down on the tube <laughs> and mine data for six months at a time. And, yeah, and and transfer it over. It was huge, huge, huge undertaking. Yeah, I mean, it's where I learned about car stuff and cars and how different car stuff was, right? Because obviously, I've been mm-hmm. known, I knew about CG. I've been working on movies. I worked on architecture. I did a bunch of stuff in CG, but mm-hmm. I, I started to realize how different the car world is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not obviously the data and all of that process, uh, but then I have to learn about how intricate and complicated car paint is and how yep. challenging it is to light something correctly. And then, you know, I think it was the first time I, I learned at Speed Shape, why you, I think you introduced me to some photographers and showing mm-hmm. how car photography takes mm-hmm. place and what that means. Mm-hmm. So it was really kind of very interesting. Oh yeah. It's all, and it's so ingrained in Detroit culture. Like it's, it's embedded, like the, the creative director, the photographer, they're like, one joined at the hip right also because they were able to fly off to hawaii rent a hotel for and have all the street like they they had the uh the keys to the the playground for i don't know 50 years right for for shooting vehicles and they had the best life in the world and then now we we came in yep and they're gonna take all the fun times away instead of uh yeah going to the most beautiful places in the world you're sitting with me in a dark office (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> waiting for renders to update and getting pissed. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. Uh-huh. I mean, we, there was a disruption in photography or car photography mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the town. Like I said, I was in a dark room for my first, uh, like I was in a photography studio in the dark room working with the photographer. Right. So when the, by the time he built the studio, it was obsolete. Uh, and then I went in there. Right. Um, Yep. So did we establish its roots? Yeah. So then we won this contract and it was single source to ha- handle all G- GM's uh, international data. Right. I don't know if it was a fi- five year contract, but no one else could grab it because they didn't want the proprietary. Like we were, um, we had all our security standards and, and stuff. So we got this check. So we built a, a little bigger company mm-hmm. and then we, we were able to hire in some other people. Um, and uh, yeah, we got the bid and i think it was uh, the first catalog was a uh, uh, cadillac with chemistry and sts catalog and uh, these creative directors were just kind of forced to use us so so even if you had everything right you you weren't going to be right so i just got beat on for <laughs> for a while right um it was disruptive yeah. and it was almost felt mm-hmm. like nope you have to use this company no matter what yeah yep and that and artists love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. They, they love to be forced. <laughs> yeah. And the same thing and, was uh, for, even if you were a visual effects company, let's say you want to make a car commercial for a GM, you know, yeah. you the, Oh, that was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they had to use you guys to get the data that was necessary and had to pay. Yep. You. Yep. And we, well, we weren't able to hand out data for a long time. That's like, right. For the first five years. So we would, um, yeah, it was just a lot of people yelling at us and it was our contract. Like we just couldn't hand it out right? or we would lose it. So we would, we would do the rendering in house and give them all the passes that we could. Right. Um, but they were still, uh, they were still not happy. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't, the, it, we were, it was like fighting, uh, fighting a losing battle, but we won. It's true. Yeah. And I, I, that's what that, you know, that sort of started, I guess, the ambition to start an LA office because you guys yeah. needed to do car commercials at this point um, yep. and had to have a presence in Los Angeles at that time because that yep. was the best place to do it, right? Also, being in Detroit, like you're in this, like a small pond and you're always looking at LA, they're just able to produce these massive things. And we're, it's always like the, like the, the, the the golden thing was LA just being able to like have the have have access to the, the most amazing talent and I, was, I don't know about at the, at the time of the world at least I thought right and I always pictured you guys just had this secret secret sauce like the secret stuff that just made everything work yeah and it took me uh, a while to just realize that everyone's talented yep. everyone works their ass off <laughs> everyone's extremely good 
and extremely hardworking. And yeah. that's and they take it very seriously. And it's not like, uh, yeah, you know, there's no secret sauce. It's work hard. Right. The secret sauce mm-hmm. is people. <laughs> yeah, people, people, and yeah, and that's been the case all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You always think there's a plugin, there's a something, there's some kind of a database. There are a lot of tools, but those are great people writing these great tools, and the artists asking these developers to write these great tools. And, yep. And that, that's the secret sauce. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. It was uh, Rob Niederhorst who you know was one of the people who started the LA office, and he contacted mm-hmm. me. And Greg Sedilis, yep. part of it. Yeah, very and, good. Uh, guy. Greg, uh, uh, Rob's doing great. He's mm-hmm. you know VFX supervising all kinds of stuff, and Greg has mm-hmm. been at Scanline for God oh, knows yeah. how long, <laughs> forever. Yeah, um, and he's doing well. But uh, all right, well that's cool. So so how long were you at Speech It? From the beginning to like the doors closed. And when did the doors close? <laughs> They closed when I was 35. Okay. Yeah, it was like, uh, uh, yeah, there was a, the big downturn in the economy. Uh, General Motors went bankrupt. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, everything kind of just shit the bed. I was, I'd drive to work and I'd, I drove by Chrysler and I'd see all the uh, news trucks in there waiting for them to they, you know, like shut doors. It was, it was the end of the world. You know, yeah. The largest company in the world declaring bankrupt. And then we held on for a while, and then uh, uh, we did movies. We did the, uh, the yeah, the Weinstein's came into town because Detroit had a film credit, That's and right. we did a lot of that. And then the film credit went away, and then uh, yeah, the company went away. Right. Uh, yeah, that's true. I was um, uh, wor- I worked on uh, on Real Steel, and that was partially filmed in, uh-huh. in Detroit. Uh, yep. So uh, because of the credits, uh, were you able to come come out for that? Or I was not part of the integration team. I was part of the lightning team. So, and I actually, yeah. it would already, it was already being, uh, sort of well underway when I got on board because I was just coming off of Tron and they said, Oh, can you help Man, on this? Oh things? yeah. With, cause <laughs> did you work with Joseph Kaczynski, uh, at, at speed shape as well? Cause he did that. I commercial. didn't, I didn't, right. but that's a, that's a good, that's a good, okay, uh, good story because I think that that story, uh, was, you know, one of the things that we needed, uh, at speed shape, uh, mm-hmm. And this is after I had left speech shape, but you know, Rob, I was oh. still very close with you guys and with Rob. Uh, but one mm-hmm. of the things that was very necessary was to uh, make a, a, a proof of concept of what what we could do as a car commercial mm-hmm. because we didn't have anything on a on a reel to do that. And uh, just before I left, we were meeting with Joe and talking mm-hmm. to him, and he was interested in doing car commercials, and he loved cars. He's a big car guy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Such a talented, and he, yeah, didn't he? He had an industrial design background. And it, he had an architecture background. Oh, arch- yeah. architects make the best. They're the like that's what I that's what I've been doing for the past ten. Well, actually, the whole time I was doing uh, Arcvis as well. Okay, well, we'll uh, get into that for a second, but I yeah. want to finish the Blackbird story because I think yeah, it was really yeah. interesting. And we uh, were we we basically told Joe. Uh, or Rob did uh, is like listen. We want we, he needed something to do to showcase his uh, directing uh, stuff, which he hadn't directed uh-huh. anything substantial at that point at all. I didn't know that. Yeah, so he had he had well, directed he did, a few small those, things. He'd done a few the sm- Nike things. Those Nike, those beautiful ethereal like like I don't know if they're a passion project. He did a Nike uh, thing. He did a he did a a, a, a clove cigarette commercial with speed uh, oh. at at, at <laughs> Sway. Uh, oh. with Rob and then he needed, he wanted to do something specifically, specifically in a car space, but you know, no one, he wasn't, he wasn't well known enough at that point. And, no. uh, Rob says so like, we have access to all the data GM has. Mm-hmm. If there's a car that you want to make a commercial about, which car would you like it to be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I believe they picked, uh, was it a, cause Saab was part Saab, of GM. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a Blackbird Saab. I think it was the last, so they made. Yeah. Was it actually? Was it a real car? Or was it a concept yeah. car? Yep. Yeah. No, it was a real car. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was. And I think it was the last one. It looked like a concept it, car. It was really cool. Yeah. 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 But the Blackbird. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it was. Or they made something really similar to it. Right. But it was a perfect fit for it. Like that brand, everything. So I got uh, uh, tasked to do my own kind of concept when you guys were doing it. Okay. And the nutty thing is. I went right to Joseph Kaczynski's 
Nike stuff for right. that ethereal, long, open feel. And like that was my uh, like motivation for the concept I was doing. Right. And then they chose yours. Yep. And then I got to get on the phone with the guy that I was like, like fanboying over. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, you know, when we speed shape was, you know, Joe's origin story in a lot of ways, because that car commercial got him to do much, many more car commercials. Unfortunately, didn't do them at speed shape. He did them at Mm -hmm. digital domain. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, the car commercials he was doing at digital domain led him to do the Tron bike light cycle uh, uh, test. Right. Because it was like a car commercial. And, oh no way! Yeah, and that got Tron greenlit at uh, Comic Con, and then that turned into Tron the movie that he directed, and now he's directed, you know, Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> That's fantastic! I didn't know. So that. think about that. Like, the, if you really sort of trace <laughs> that 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 lineage of what Joe was doing mm-hmm. at the time, I remember actually. Uh, again, it was just before I left, but, uh, uh, it was me and, uh, Rob and Joe, we were uh, Mm -hmm. walking around the LA auto show, checking out cars Mm -hmm. and like (laughs) looking at things. And it was kind of being inspired by that. It was kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but it, it, it shows even, this was, uh, probably mid nineties, maybe 2000. Yeah. His. His, like he just conveyed such an ethereal feeling. Like I could still, uh, I'm not goosebumps, but he conveyed such an amazing mood, like with the, the uh, large farm wheat field and the thresher moving, like it just set a tone with like very little detail. It just the, 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 the musical score and, and the framing. Yeah. And do you remember his, was, his desert house project that he did too? That oh was, yeah. That was way, way later. Right. That was, like, it wasn't just, Someone standing next to a giant window. It was, it was, it was a kind of like an arc viz type thing, but it was, it was like a spy photography uh, walking through a a house in the desert. And it was kind of very surreal uh, and cool. And that got Uh Fincher's attention. And that's how he got connected at anonymous content through that process. That's great. I'm glad we could help. So he's a super talented dude. And I I love, yeah. Yeah, I loved getting on the phone with him, and it was a, a beautiful. It was probably one of the best things Speed Shape ever kicked out. Yeah, it's beautiful. The Blackbird Project is really beautiful. Hopefully, it's still online, and we can check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll put the link in below. But it, it was something that was really cool, and it was cool to have Joe be part of it. And you're absolutely right; he's very cool mm-hmm. and collaborative, and he also knows CG really well, so he can communicate mm-hmm. really well about CG mm-hmm. because his background was in CG as well. So, okay. So, so you, you worked on a couple of things. You, you worked on a, a few things, uh, some, a few, uh, shows you did some matrix stuff, right? That was one of the other things you were doing, right? Mm-hmm. No matrix matrix. No, we had the, the, our, you bought the office was the matrix. Office. That's that what was, it was. Yeah. <laughs> that was as close as we, we got. That was cool. Yeah. The, um, but yeah, in Detroit, every once in a while, something would trickle in. Like we got to do. Rebecca Tomain Stainless's eyeball, like when when she uh, had her eye infection, everything got shot out all around the country. We did that, and but mainly it was just yeah, Hollywood stuff didn't really. We had the car commercials, um, but nothing really hit Detroit. Yeah, besides commercials, right? Like all the VFX stuff got farmed back to, to Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so what? So so you got? Did you get into Arcviz right after that, or how did that go? So. Um, uh, yeah, right. I, I saw that like, uh, being a fine artist wasn't going to work. And then I was working at this engineering, uh, company and, um, all my, uh, CCS friends started working at exhibit companies. And one of them was like the world's largest, uh, uh, yeah, privately held exhibit company, George P. Johnson. And they would bring me in to do like, their high-end rendering, like so for Toyota, so I would just build out these uh, massive showrooms, haul every car, and uh, light them shiny cars and fly-throughs and. Right. So, so this would be yeah. for like showrooms or or yep. or for like car shows and things to like that. To get it to get it sold. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Like so, I'm actually still doing it. <laughs> they they you you get a a a, a request for like a concept and they send it out and then all the exhibit companies bust their ass for 
four or five months and then one gets it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Well, that's interesting. Do you like, do you like doing that? I mean, it's, that's pretty cool. Um, it, it's always a mad dash and it's just like the, the devil I know. Like right. I can, like I'm comfortable going head first into any, uh, uh, yeah, the most complicated architectural and just start digging through data from that, from SketchUp, from Revit, from everything. And then, uh, yeah, plowing through it and, and organizing it and lighting it. Do you feel yeah. that the, the world of, of cars, be it advertising or exhibits or whatever has, has trained, mm -hmm. uh, changed drastically in the last decade or so? Oh yeah. 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 Fine. Like the money is, gone <laughs> uh there is a a big like back to the roots push where people are, are are still going on shoots and and getting dirty like great locations like i have, I have a lot of friends that that shoot for, for like jeep and and like the ruggedy dirtier ones right uh but yeah a lot of the companies pulled it in-house so uh they saw they, they were able to get their own machines and and they got their own yeah actually a lot, probably a lot of uh like when SpeedShape imploded, everyone went everywhere. So like they took the, the, the talent went scattered around the earth. And right. uh, a lot of them went in, internally within the, the automotive companies and started, uh, started their, yeah, doing it themselves, which is, is great. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, you know, the money, money went away or things definitely changed in Detroit, right? Because mm -hmm. of the, the the bankrupt and this was around this must have been around 2008 or something right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yep okay uh and, but it's interesting because i mean you know i was for for a while uh i was doing a lot of car commercials over at mm -hmm. at sway and it was kind of there was a lot of stuff that was like they were these commercials were expensive <laughs> mm -hmm. was yeah only, they still are they got the money <laughs> right yeah yeah, and car but, stuff is hard to do, to mm -hmm, get it right. Mm -hmm. Well, you can get it right, but you're only done when the, yeah, you know, when the client says, yeah. Like, it could be fucking most accurate, beautiful thing, but no, they they want a big flat and, like, look like a Christmas bulb. And a lot of shit ended up looking like a goddamn Christmas bulb <laughs> just because, but you made it perfect. Yeah. And then, then uh, you get directed to... to to make it like a big reflective nothing. <laughs> yeah, Christmas. A lot of Christmas balls or was a lot it? of Christmas balls. I used to call them a uh, 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 bass boat. You know, paint. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, that was before the schizophlactic. How do you say it? Schizophlactic flakes. Oh, stochastic the, flake. The class sarcastic flakes. <laughs> very sarcastic. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it's very, and you know, it was interesting. You're absolutely right because I was thinking about that the other day. Obviously, at Sway, uh, we had a, a car simulator that could, you know, drive the car and do all yep. that stuff. Oh, that that wasn't wasn't there too. Was there like something called like a Blackbird thing, like a that the wheelbase could change and all that, or was that in frame stores? Someone no, that was, was that was at guys? Sway. It was at Sway. Oh, okay. and it was called the Drivatron. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was very accurate. Like you could, uh -huh. it, it was, and so we would drive the car <laughs> and then cool. in CG, we would do this thing and it looked perfect. It looked just like it. Uh -huh. But then because the, the person or the, the art directors or the, the agency knew it was in CG, they would always ask for the driver yep. to be more aggressive. <laughs> and we were like, but, and then so Graham, who was, you know, wrote the, the simulator and uh, navigate, he's like, in order for this to work, I have to put like super glue on the tires. And it's like, <laughs> and essentially I, he put it like how many G's are in the car. It's like the guy would pass out from driving this yep. car. It was just so many G's from making that turn so aggressive. And they're like, that looks great. It's like, that's not realistic at all. <laughs> yep. 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 And then you get into, uh, yeah, all the different, uh, um, shutter speeds on a uh, tire rotation. That oh, right. Oh, it's like, if they're going backwards, it shouldn't be like that. They're oh yeah. Because yeah, cause, yeah. everything crisp. Yeah. We I had to explain it. wagon wheeling to people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to feel it, see it crisp. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So you're all, with that, every project, you're only as good as your client lets you be. Uh, you're, you're That's true. Like, you could do director cuts, but usually you're de You're done. <laughs> By the time by the time the project gets out the door, you don't want to see it again. That's probably why the Joe project looks so good because he got it. 
He understood. Yeah. It. Oh, it was every so I, I would get on the phone with him. I was doing like the ice thing. Oh, that's right. And like uh, yeah, and the car driving over, and we would do night night calls. And like everything he said was like, yep, yep. So many times you get our director, and they like they try, and it, it just starts going further away from from a good looking shot. But no, everything he said was. Uh, yeah, the displacement and the ice and the, the, yeah, all the textures. And then you guys did an amazing job uh, compositing it. Like, right. But when you throw something off to compositing and then it, and then it totally changes. <laughs> like, hey, you do A over B? Like, yeah. Well, luckily, Rob, Rob uh, knows oh, yeah. compositing really well. <laughs> because Rob, Rob just wanted to, he, he wanted it to get out. Like, he didn't want to put his hands all over it. Like you get a comper that really wants to put their style on it. Right. Don't <laughs> make, it, make it look good. Rob just wanted to get it signed off on and yeah. he didn't want to put yeah. his <laughs> effects. Well, uh, so did you, did you sort of, I mean, are, are you still working for, for that company or are you, are, or are you going more freelance in terms of the work you're doing at this point? Yeah. So right after speed shape, I just kind of like, I walked the earth, for some five years, I just took off. I didn't have a family or anything or responsibilities. So I yeah. just, I left and just hiked and, and walked and, and traveled for, for years. And then that kind of got boring. Where did you go? I, <laughs> uh, I did a couple months Southeast Asia. I went all over Africa. I, I, I got, it was really into rock climbing. So I climbed the, like Patagonia, went over in the, um, yeah, pretty much all, all over. You know, that's amazing the, a lot of not, not many people have that opportunity <laughs> yeah i had opportunity yeah like hike, like yeah all of kilimanjaro and the cambodias and um yeah i spent a bunch of time in ethiopia i loved it um yeah. that's amazing but yeah it, i enjoy it, it, i enjoy sitting at home too <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah i got back into it uh like I was going to get back in the car stuff, uh, but it, it was so, it was very stressful. I, I it was 10 years of this, all the gray hair came from that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, working seven days a week and I was 25 then and I had the energy to do it. Uh, I'm 45. I don't have, <laughs> right. I don't have that, 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 uh, that drive or that, just the energy to, to work all nighters. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I keep busy. I've been doing, uh, uh, yeah, I work with an architecture company, but still uh, uh, friends from uh, um, doing all the like auto show stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll get, I'll get called in on projects right now. I'm on like a four month project for, for doing uh, uh, like I'm working with F F1 right now. And Oh, with F1. Yeah. 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 So we're oh. doing uh, probably some of that secret, but yeah, so I'm doing <laughs> a lot of those. Uh, but a cool thing in the, in the interim, I was working for a Canadian company and we did all the, uh, we were, we had NVIDIA as a client, we would do their exhibits and they handed me off all their like GPUs and I was able to take all the Al Davis uh, Raiders stadium from Las Vegas. So I had that all and we were uh, modeling out all the little, uh, um, like every person that wanted a venue or a, a space within the Raiders stadium, they would contact us and we, we would build that out. And then, like right around Christmas, Al Davis couldn't get uh, the torch right. Like he was pissed at the architects. They would get it was a flame, and it had all this like weird looking, like uh, Superman, uh, like looking crystals growing out of it. And he's like, "I don't want that." He couldn't say what he wanted. Um, so I worked with a, a creative director, and we came up with a simple twenty minutes, a revolve, and like a real easy LED flame. Uh, and on Christmas Eve, he, he bought it on the spot. So, oh, awesome! I, I created that L, L. Davis memorial torch with like Max in 20 minutes. That LED thing. So that was a that was kind of a cool project. That's cool, and, man. And it was just the simplest simplest approach you could possibly do. And he's like, that that's exactly what I wanted. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a, it was a revolve bisected in three segments. Non-uniform scale, soft select, rotate, and then put a shell on it, and it was done. It's pretty straightforward. And it was a, yeah, five million dollars later, it was built and, and revealed. And, That's yeah, amazing. Was a, that was a good, yeah, a highlight of career. What do you yeah, what, what what are your thoughts about the about the future of this stuff? Like, where where Fox do you think? Fuck, I know. 
Every day. That's what? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. So, uh, like, last year, I really got into mid-journey, and yeah. uh, I, I did the whole Discord thing, sign up, and I made, like, Queen Elizabeth. And it was, it was yeah, July last year. And I'm like, all right, doing all these descriptors. I could bring them up. They look like a, look like a mashed potato with, like, a little bit of a tiara. <laughs> and then six months later, like, my jaw hits the the floor like and the the uh, ability for ai to, to replicate stuff and yeah right before we got on the call i'm, I'm making like i'm trying to do uh uh gary larson's far side comics and 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 ai and um uh, yeah the the mount things are progressing it's it's, it's beyond my comprehension and i, I spend my life doing this <laughs> like it is it, it's it, it, Words don't describe how, how made. What are your thoughts? I mean, you, have you has this brought new a new skill set to you that you didn't know was possible, or it's taken up all my time. I have like when I look at my logs for just Mid Journey alone, I got eight hundred hours in four months <laughs> of playing with pictures. I've got like uh, probably a hundred thousand images generated. Wow. Uh, yep, and just trying, just tweaking and 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 uh, mutations and. Yeah, and it, we're in like sci-fi. Like I said to my buddy the other day, we went from like Blade Runner, where it was like enhance, enhance, yeah. and now we're in like Harry Potter mode, where it's just full on magic happening every day. It's true. It's funny. I was thinking about the the Blade Runner things and how we just always used to joke. Joke, yeah. We used to joke. It's like that's not possible. It's like uh -huh. actually, uh -huh. <laughs> you're not going to see that fish scale for real, but you can still. Enhance, enhance, enhance. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting now is like, you know, the, the thing that's funny about the, the, the Blade Runner one is that uh, they go around a corner, right? Like you can't go oh, around yeah, a corner in a, <laughs> in a picture. There's a, but did you the, ever read that paper about the, the bouncing uh, waves that, and being able to see shadow? Yeah. That's what I was yeah, just about to say. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they're now using Wi-Fi <laughs> signals. Oh, really? Because the uh -huh. Wi-Fi that bounces around your house, they can actually radar detect people behind walls. And it's really funny you brought up uh, Blade Runner. Last night, I had dinner with an old uh, GM, uh, Jerry Brockstein. And he right. was roommates with, with Sid Mead. Like that oh, his, right. I met roommate. Sid. <laughs> he's a good, he's a good uh, Detroiter. Yeah. He is a good Detroiter. He's unfortunately passed away, but he's yeah, <laughs> last year. I, yeah. He, he just told me that, but they were, and, uh, but then also like his work is still holds ground, like, per, like oh, it's yeah. there. And so when you think about all the, yeah, the tech, like good, solid, beautiful work doesn't change. Like it, it, it stands the test of time. Yep. Um, but yeah, for the future, uh, yeah, like what do you tell kids? Like I got a twelve year old, right? Wants to go into art field. And you're like, wait, wait. <laughs> wait well, like, develop develop a good eye, but uh, um. So, but hold on. So, there's a couple things that mm -hmm. is important, and I just wanted to get to the bottom of it because I think it's important. Well, you've really gotten into AI stuff, which is great. Mm -hmm. But the best AI stuff that I have seen is from people who have a good eye. And have a, mm -hmm. who are good artists too. And mm -hmm. while you sort of claim that I'm not really a good fine artist, I saw the work you did in CG, and you clearly have a good eye to do mm -hmm. that, right? You may not necessarily have the painting skills or the drawing mm -hmm. skills, but you know how you know what looks good, right? <laughs> I do have those skills, but they just didn't make any money. <laughs> they were never going. <laughs> right. They were going to leave me in the poorhouse. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But I still scratch, I scratch that it's so well with, uh, with AI, like where I would doodle on the couch. Now I'm like doodling with like minor permutation of prompts. Like I still get that same, like excited cooking, like what comes up next that I would get when a pencil hits the paper and you kind of just see it, uh, evolve. Like I get that with a stable. So the crazy thing, stable diffusion, that's how I see everything. I just, like the progressive diffusion, like when I paint or draw, my mm -hmm. eyes are almost closed. And I, I draw until it kind of pull, pulls out from, from, like people would say, anyone that would watch me draw in meetings, they're like, your eyes are completely closed. I'm like, no, that's just how I've always done it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you go, you get, get as blurry as you possibly can, and you start building up from there. And right. that's a stable, the, the diffusion part of 
the whatever the computer is doing. Is what, yeah. The way yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you, have you played with stable diffusion as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't, it's not as nice. Well, I think mid journey people wrote their own thing on top of, so now it's totally separated from stable diffusion. Uh, but yeah, I, I downloaded it and I work with it and I got like my whole hard drive is full of models, of, but I, I still, uh, I'm, it's so technical that it kind of takes some of the joy out of it. Like by the time it works, you're like, yeah, <laughs> right. I, I, I'm done. But I, I'd rather, I like when people like build in the plugins to uh, like discord and then I, I play with them there, but yeah, I do. I have it all locally as well, but I'm, I'm always a little disappointed with what I get from that. Uh, the automatic right. eleven eleven and and all that, but I, I yeah I'm fascinated with uh, uh yeah the video aspect of it trying to just from last year uh, I was ready to buy like one of those Rococo suits last year and like had it all ordered and everything and then the job went away and like now I wouldn't even think think about uh, getting the suit out yeah because you just do use, like move AI or something like yep. that right yep and that wasn't around last it wasn't around yeah last August it was maybe it was in the, they had a few of them, but like the feet were all like floaty and, and you would get just like the basic uh, gestures. Right. Um, but then now uh, that came out. Do but you yeah, think that like, there's going to be a, 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 you know, the, 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 the role of prompt jockey is starting to be jumped yeah. around. Oh, I, I'd, I'd love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you, you still build everything in your head. And the craziest thing is I went to art school, so I didn't have to like spell and and think like communicate verbally like i communicate all like sculpting and i was blacksmith i did all that stuff and now in the last like five months like my brain is like i can feel it painfully turning into a, a verbal like where i describe like like i tried taking a picture of like water droplets on a, a magnolia tree this thing and like while i was taking the picture i was mentally transcribing it into words <laughs> That like that uh, the later I was prompting, so it's neat that that your visual cues can can like slip into uh, uh, like a text like it's a, it's a whole different chunk of your brain. Yeah, but but that's happening. And now I'm, I'm learning how to spell, and I can spell almost perfectly when I'm prompting, but I still when I text, everything gets jacked up. But I know like for me to get what I want, I have to spell it right. But like for people to understand me, I can say any I can <laughs> I can type any way I want. And they'll kind of figure it out. But if I want, I need to spell it right. So that's interesting. That's that. That's that. So yeah, it's going to change. It's everything. Everything's up in the air. Yeah. And you said you've made over a hundred thousand images. Probably too many. Too. When I look, I'm like, man, I gotta. So I've been banned probably four times from Mid Journey, like just for creating crazy ass photos and skulls and and like. Uh, bizarre people and they'll they'll warn me and warn me and then uh, I'll get stuff. So I get these little breaks of like, I'll get banned for like 12 hours, 10 hours. And so that's my only What's time. The, I, what, what do they ban you for? I, just bizarre, like mutated. Like they want to be all family. Uh, I, I, my, my son drew a picture of like a, a mushroom with fangs. And uh, yeah, I, I tried, I was making that real and I got, I got like their, their AI filters are real it's, it's it, mid journey is like it they want to be like disney they want okay. everything to be family and I, everything i do in my own personal work is kind of like not like creepy creepy but on the darker side right and I'm interesting like, yeah. and they banned that oh yeah oh i've been banned a bunch of times yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was a a week yeah wow yeah, but and i'm like even even like rent i got banned for like renaissance uh, like painting, like, uh, like, uh, what was I doing? Singer Sergeant, like kind of like women with like draped clothing. And yeah, totally banned. That's crazy. That's <laughs> I'm like, what would, what would, yeah. What would, uh, uh, Michelangelo, how far would he get with mid journey? <laughs> right. <laughs> nope. Nope. Can't show skin. Can't show nothing. That's interesting. Yeah. I remember, uh, I was trying to use mid journey to do an image for um, uh, for a martini giant, right? Mm -hmm. And we were uh, we were going to cover uh, Fight Club. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said, you know, what I need is, and I want the Fight Club image, right, of of Brad Pitt, 
but holding a martini, right? So that was mm-hmm. the idea I was going to try to do. And mm-hmm. so I put down uh, <laughs> Brad Pitt shirtless holding a martini. Yeah. And wow. the word shirtless <laughs> yeah. immediately caused uh-huh. problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was yep. like, but he's in the poster. <laughs> he's shirtless. <laughs> yeah. And then for stuff like that, you would do like kind of like just a kick bash, like just draw like rudimentary kind of thing. And then sometimes it's not like it won't know what you, it would be like triangle glass or something. You got to trick it. So right. I'm getting asked by uh, uh, a lot of my uh, like, uh, colleagues to, to generate images for them for like concepts for uh, interesting um, for exhibits. So it's like all like the first round. They'll, they'll give me like a style board and then I'll generate, make 50 images and then they'll, they'll pick, pick a few of them out of there. How, how, how is it like, you know, in, in, in Detroit, obviously there is a lot of concept and, and, and advertising and that kind of mm-hmm. process that goes on there. Um, how is their, what's their feeling about AI tools in the creative process? Just scared of it. Like everyone's having meetings and they're like, they know it's there. Nobody's outwardly using it. Um, but they'll, they'll use it in their creative brief so far. Uh, okay. but still, they even Detroit, you put a wrong font on something, you're getting sued. <laughs> like, right. in the, uh, like you can't, you, if you can't trace the providence or whatever, like own, own that image outright. Uh, yeah, you go, you get sued. And each agency is like held to a high level. Like it's there, it's on them if they don't have the license and then every image goes through the, uh, their legal team. So. A lot of them, if you can't see the paperwork of who shot this photo, you can't use it. What's, and since legal teams are looking at this stuff, how, what is their feelings about these, these tools? Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know what their feelings are, but I don't think you can legally use, use any of those. Right. Like outright. Yeah. I think you just, just for concept right now, like you can put them okay. in and, uh, uh, yeah, back plates, concepting loose stuff until it gets. It's maybe with like Firefly, like now Photoshop, uh, like has their their stuff and they're all buttoned up. Well, for I now, mean, yeah, yeah <laughs> they're definition of button up. I mean, listen, I, I'm very much interested, and I'm actually going to do a podcast with the Adobe guys, so I'm excited about uh-huh. that. But you know, they're they basically they're I think they use the term ethically sourced AI, which is yeah, great. that's great. <laughs> it's just I'm kind of funny. I'm picturing going out and like harvesting. Photos mm-hmm. like ethically mm-hmm. sourced yeah. animals, true organic, get organic it, get, get style. In uh-huh. <laughs> get in there. Cage, cage free AI. Yeah. <laughs> you were you were sourced ethically. Well, but it That's is. It. I mean, it is. It is based on basically Adobe stock. So Adobe stock is stuff that mm-hmm. they own, and the part of the agreements of Adobe stock is they can do that. Mm-hmm. So it is kind of interesting to do that. But um, yeah, it's interesting. What's your feelings about? Uh, that those tools in terms of bias. What do you mean by bias? Well, uh, you know, all these tools are based on a certain parameters that they oh, can yeah, try yeah, to yeah, set, yeah, yeah. or or even Midjourney yeah. that tries to yeah. ban you based on what you're trying to do. That's a yeah. kind of bias. Well, also, and, and it's like they're what they're fed upon. Like you do a, a what is it, Norman Rockwell? It's yeah. there, like it's there, and it, it's dead not on. But you do obscure, like odd odd nerd room, or like some of my favorite artists. It just doesn't have. You kind of have to build it, build it from there. Like right. It, uh, um, but it, it, it's, you, and I think each of those like plugins for like, that's when all those uh, add-ons for like uh, automatic 1111, like you, you find something mm-hmm. that fits your style and then, and then you start building off of that. Like, um, yeah, eventually maybe you'll have your own. Yeah. Instead of artists being artists, they'll have their own like database or something like tagged to your own style. Cause the interest, my wife uses my mid journey account and like, you can tell, I can tell out of those hundred thousand, anyone could tell like what she did or, or my son did compared to me. Like you can, your style still kind of permute, permute takes through the algorithm and, and, and makes what you want to make. So eventually maybe you'll have your own like database that will travel with you. So you, as a, as a prompter, you'll have your like repository of yeah. prompts as your, your style instead of well, like, I- I know that in to Stable Diffusion, you can train Stable Diffusion with your own data set. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, you use ControlNet, and then you can, you can feed it some stuff. And Yeah, I was actually I, trying to do that as well. I do, I do think that that's going to be the case. Um, I think that people are going to start looking at 
both uh, uh, models for 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 for, for uh, text to image stuff, uh, mm -hmm. but also large language models based on their style of yep. writing. <laughs> yep. As well. Yeah, I wonder how what that'll look like. Like you'll just have a cloud of or a big maybe you'll have like a crazy like ID tag that'll just like a crypto tag. Yeah. So like somehow you'll log around your your lifetime of work of of ideas. There is actually sorry, we're going on a tangent, but that's okay. I love tangents. <laughs> there's uh there's now uh, the idea of AI grief centers. Uh huh. which is uh so That's great. Your your if someone has a hard time with you you, you passing, they can create uh -huh. Uh, a, a center with like, and that you can continue to text your loved ones after you're gone uh, as you. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I love, I love stuff like, uh, yeah, I think that's like some of the best cases of like VR is like overcoming like fears because like you can kind of put yourself yeah, in that's like true. a controlled area and experience the same thing in like dreams. Like you kind of like you rehash things until they're not so bad or, right. or yeah, you're able to like, uh, those are good, great uses. There's actually, I uh, think, uh, in in VR, there's actually uh, uh, it's been a, an unbelievably powerful tool for for soldiers mm -hmm. with PTSD. Yep. Because of uh, it, it sort of puts a, a level of separation, uh -huh. <laughs> and then they can openly communicate based on that that separation that was doing there. It's very interesting. Yep. Well, and cool. All right. Well, uh, what can we look forward to? So, obviously, besides you making a, lots and lots of mid journey stuff, where can people follow that work do you have it on instagram or yeah it... yeah i've got a, uh actually rob rob Niederhorst has been reaching out to me about that uh i think it's prompt painter but just just my i could look it up just Lyndon venard you, you'd find it and yeah i put stuff almost yeah i had to make a separate one because all my friends were so sick of me talking about it and <laughs> they didn't want to see they're like you know i'm gonna i'm blocking you because i don't want to see these ai pictures anymore I'm like, fine i'll make a separate <laughs> one so i made a separate one and that's uh, awesome. yeah, so it's just, just Lyndon Bernard somewhere in Instagram. I put them up just for, yeah, for myself. <laughs> that's cool. Well, I'm going to get you in touch with my, my friend, Eric Sheely, who he's, who is oh, one of the co-hosts. I love Eric. He does you the know. best, uh, <laughs> the best Carl Siebert. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> ah, buddy, buddy. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I forgot great, you know Eric. That's uh, right. Yeah. He's a great dude. Yeah. But I don't know what he's doing. What's he doing? He is in Florida now. Uh, uh -huh. He was working. Uh, he was doing some work from from Florida, uh, mm -hmm. and he's uh, doing. He's doing a job where he's actually designing a user interface and training for some specific software, which is kind of interesting and fun. And uh, he's doing that, but he's also working with me okay. on Martini Giant. But oh, uh, and he's been writing uh, a movie, and he's been using uh, Mid Journey for his inspiration. Oh yeah, I think I that. saw some. Of, yeah, I, I mm -hmm. saw some of that stuff. I so, uh, but you should reach out to him because he is a huge mid journey guy and he is completely uh -huh. obsessed with, uh, um, with it. And also just similar to you comes from an art background as well uh -huh. and sort of sees that as a thing. So I'm sure you guys should exchange your ideas and, and, you know, uh, share some of that stuff because. And yeah, there is a big duality. Like I, uh, a lot of my traditional artists, friends won't even talk to me about it. Like I, I bike ride with a, a sculptor and he's just, pissed at me if i bring up any like i know it's like they some people put up a blocker and then and like i'm shouting from a, a mountaintop like how how amazed i am and how it's like i think it's the, the biggest thing in my lifetime to happen i think i attribute almost to like human conversation like it's it's like a quantum leap a paradigm shift in humanity right. uh, to be able to create something from nothing um but yeah it pisses uh, a lot of people off. They don't want to talk to me. <laughs> I know it's, it is, it is, uh, there's been several divisive things yeah, in the super. industry, you know, uh, final render versus V-Ray as an example. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I know or, in there. I, I was a big fan of both. Uh, but, I, but, I, I, but I, I think, and you know, NFTs was another one, but this one is the most divisive I've ever seen in, in the artist uh -huh. community. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm embracing it. Well, like hand over fist, I'm 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 like you say ball teeth, but I'm like way in. Yeah, I dream in France, but 
Adrian yeah. prompts. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I bet you do. The last thing I uh, uh, I do before I go to sleep and the first thing I, 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 when I wake up. That's amazing. That's I'm amazing. Prompted and prompted and making. Well, I will uh, I will make sure to let because I talk to Eric almost every day, so mm -hmm. I will let sure okay. let him know that uh, that you guys should get back in touch and talk about mid journey uh -huh. stuff because uh, uh, he he's really interested and he's made so many interesting discoveries. Um, he's been using it specifically to uh, he's the story he's trying to tell takes place in 1970s in Greenwich, Connecticut, and he's hmm. been using this is his childhood, uh, oh, and he's using it. Uh, to actually mid journey to create photographs of the past that didn't actually Whoa. happen or or similarly happen, so interpreting them. Uh, uh -huh. It's a kind of fascinating in a lot of ways to see what he's done. Yeah, and so this brings me back like that collaborative vibe feeling, like yeah, from this like anyone that wants to reach out the most bizarre concept. Like I'm at a point in my life where I just love to be involved with out there things like i've done the like i'm a fine artist that made a career doing engineering architecture and like cars but like at heart i'm like a david lynch <laughs> the, the, <laughs> those are the weirdest things like the stuff that i love it's embarrassing how bizarre <laughs> like it's not <laughs> Well, not having met you, one. having met you, I don't think that's any surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one wants to see what I what I really want to make. But, What's uh, inside uh, your brain? Well, that's yeah, another no thing, right? There's in there's brain. things inside each other's brains that it's yeah. that it's really hilarious. And and, and honestly, uh -huh. you know, whether you have issues with AI or not, the thing that I found fascinating about these tools is that. I've suddenly seen what's coming out of people's brains way more than before. And it turns mm -hmm. out it's way more interesting than I've seen in art in the last. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you, you know, that feeling when you like, you're just jealous. Like, okay. When I saw like Habaro, like uh, the uh, uh, love death robot stuff like, yeah. and the witness. The yeah. only, it's, and even Joseph Kaczynski, like those guys, like I would see something and I would just get jealous. Right. Like where like like something not that like where my soul like I feel like the just jealousy like full on and then uh, with AI some of the images I'm just like oh my god that is the coolest thing I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, there's very very few artists and things where I'm I'm like I can appreciate everything, but there's a few things where I'm just like drop jaw jealous of what yeah. was produced. <laughs> For sure, yep. for sure. Well, awesome, and then I thank you so much for for being on. It's so awesome mm -hmm. to catch up with you, yeah, and yeah, to I see uh, see this. And I'm definitely gonna tell people to follow your Instagram yeah. and check out the cool stuff you're doing there. Yeah, yep. And uh, cool, awesome. Thanks, man. All right, it was fantastic talking to you, and yeah, anytime. <laughs>